I know you're asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, yes, sir. however frustrating the hour, it will not be long. Well, uh, going back to when I was a kid, uh, I started working at an early age, something like 11, 12 years old. Uh, at 12 years old, I was shining shoes downtown at a lot of young shoe repair. I would have to walk about a mile and a half to work every day. Back then, the bus fare was a dime, but I only made 50 cents, and I had three other brothers that we had to uh, give lunch money to every day, so I was working for lunch money for the next day. I worked there for maybe six or eight months, and then I saw another opportunity that was closer to me. And that opportunity was at a service station about three blocks away instead of a mile, almost a mile and a half away. The owner we called Pap, Mr. Hoover. Hoover, he just, we just had a great relationship. Billy Hoover, who was his son, had just gotten out of service, but uh, he was a very racist kind of guy. Now, as a kid at 13 years old, this guy is calling us all kind of N-words at any time, talks about us to the customers. If we were a little slow getting to a car because we were doing something else, he would come in there or come to the door and holler, you GDN, get out here and get this car. And he just dealt with us like we were just absolutely nothing. I have a dream that one day, this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Prejudice really comes from, well, he or she's different than I am. They have a different skin color. They have a different uh, religion. They don't agree with me, so they're different. There was a restaurant sit-in in downtown Nashville, somewhere around Church Street or something like that. And black people were supposed to be here and white people were supposed to be here. And if I get the story right, black people weren't allowed, were not allowed to sit at the counter when Dr. King uh, was in Birmingham and in Alabama. And these images on television of police dogs hiding human people. I mean, it's like, what's going on here? And to, to see that, that that would be allowed, it just said, you know, there's something really terrible here. These are people. Martin Luther King was sort of like a father to us all that was leading us into the right direction. We felt God through Martin Luther King. We knew that God was giving him the message that we were looking for. We knew God was doing that. So it was so easy to follow and to understand uh, uh, the emotions that was in Martin Luther King at the time.